A young girl with dreams of traveling the world and exploring new languages is encouraged to take advantage of every opportunity that comes her way. But first, she must learn to speak up for herself and use her voice to show others what she has to offer. The girl is Jade. The book piecing me together and you're listening to lit society let's get lit This is Alexis. And this is Kari. And you're listening to Lit Society, a show about books and drama. How are you this week, Kari? Girl, good. How are you doing? I am doing well. Um, I actually started seeing a strength coach. Um, Tell me, what is that? Well, this helps me identify my personal strengths. And then um, knowing my strengths helps me to ask for what I want and need in work situations and in situations throughout life. So um, while I don't remember, well, I do. I remember like my top five. I think I'm restorative. They're mostly they're relationship building and they're strategic, like in my top five, which I find odd. But I connect really a lot with the um um, the relationship building, because I do like I that. Um, a lot of one on one relationships versus really mm-hmm. um, global kind of friendships or big groups. <laughs> you do? Yeah, I um, get to know people okay. um, better one on one. That's what I mean. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So so how does one know that they need a strength coach? How do you even get there? And then how do you find one? So um, actually, I found this woman through my daughter her job offered it to her because her boss wanted to know her strengths when she started working for her and so my daughter had been telling me about it for a while and I had um, been putting it off but um, more recently as I've been kind of reflecting on what I know about myself and kind of through therapy I've been trying Mm -hmm. to reflect on myself and what I know about myself and I feel like I'm not really open or um, I don't know as much as I feel like I should know about myself strongly so um, I took the test and it had like 34 um strengths you know that's a big gap but you focus on like your first your top 10 and so my daughter had been seeing the coach and so she suggested I see the same person and so I did and we've hit it off and it's been really great um to really awesome. explore these avenues about myself so it's pretty cool yeah oh I'd be interested to see the, hear the story as it unfolds yeah, <laughs> yeah. well you got to <laughs> tell me if you notice um things different about me okay, as I explore I will. it um more it helps me to work with others better um you know you know, because I know what I need from people and then and share some of the gems you pick up, too, with me. I most certainly will. So I don't have to pay to talk to nobody. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's cool. All right, thanks, man. I think I would like you to take it so I know what your strengths mm, are. And, and mm. you can just do like a top five. And then that way I can um, I can know. I mean, for free. Yes, it would be for, oh, take for it. free. Definitely. OK, uh-huh. just so um, I can identify it. And then that'll help me and it'll help us be better. So. I think it'd be sure. Cool. Yeah. Is this something we should post on our website? I don't know. We have to think about that. I mean, it'd be okay. great, but yeah. Yeah. I think it'd be cool. Okay, cool. Anyway, so each week, readers, we choose a theme to discuss based on the book that we're reading. And this week, our theme is how to be a great mentor. So, mm. Kari, have you ever yeah. had an opportunity to be a mentor or were you ever mentored? I've had many opportunities to be a mentor to actually p- play a pivotal role in a young person's life. Oh, and I've let all cool. of those opportunities pass me on by <laughs> Wait, <why? laughs> for various reasons. I've even had um, people come up to me and ask for advice on certain things. Oh, wow. I mean, I, I'm just I don't I don't take myself seriously enough to be a mentor. I feel like to be a, a mentor, you have to be in a little upper echelon, a little society that I am yet to be a part of. However, that is not true. That is not true. I know it's not true. It, it really and maybe part of me just don't want to. Well and and so speak that if that's what it really is. <laughs> but then sometimes I do. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to mess anyone up. So here's the thing. <laughs> Mentoring is about assisting someone that's less experienced. And you have have you ever been a mentor? A wealth of of experience. So um well you're a mom, so well yeah that's kind of different. But what I can say is um I've always wanted a formal mentor, but I've never had one. Wait, actually, I take that back. Early in my um, role um, with the firm, I signed up 
for a mentor um, and through a professional organization. And I may, maybe once or twice, but I wasn't prepared. I expected the mentor to do more um, when it was really me that needed to be uh, do more. Yeah. So I will say I've been a mentee a couple of times yeah. to some um, very patient, older white gentlemen okay. <laughs> who write in genres that I am not an expert in. Mm -hmm. They've read my work, provided feedback, um, even opened a couple doors. But the mentee does the heavy lifting. Yeah. Yeah. And so when you don't continue with the lifting, then the relationship can fall apart yeah, for sure. Yeah. And um, so my mentor relationship with this person, I think we met maybe once or two, we met at least once. And I can say that I didn't feel connected to this person. Um, mm -hmm. um, and one, I thought I should get more from it, but I also didn't feel connected to this person. And I think that's a big deal that you need to yeah. um, have some kind of connection um, with it the person now does it count like growing up we had um, people in our lives from within our communities who would take time with me and other kids and um you know help us out volunteering i think things that like does that. i think that i does think so count. too That's actually huge. yeah those would be someone who's in a place that you want to be and who helps you see that your goals are possible yeah so yeah i've had some extremely um impactful mentors in my life yeah and, thinking about it and i would consider those informal mentors right OK. Yeah. And so I've had an informal mentor and I feel like she helped me believe in myself and yeah, helped me feel like yeah. I wasn't living. I'm not an imposter that I can actually mm -hmm. do the work. So that was that was helpful. And throughout the years working with the firm, um, we work closely with local schools and hire uh, high schoolers and we introduce them to various areas of the business, like um, our HR department, our technology, our marketing, hospitality and office services. And I've been privileged to work with um, six high school um, students over the years. So while I wasn't technically a mentor, I've had an opportunity to introduce these folks, these um, youth to the workforce and, um, you know, give them the guidance they need um, preparing to be in a workforce when they complete school yeah. at whatever level, uh, double checking their work, paying attention to detail, speaking up for yourself, or just knowing, you know, when you come into um, the office, don't lightly tap, but knock and let people know that you're there and then yeah. um, present yourself. Some assertiveness. Yeah. yeah encouraging them to be assertive. Mm -hmm. I also encourage them to bring a notepad to the meeting because sometimes you you come in that room and you're like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then you've walked away and you've forgotten everything I've told you. Oh, I always so, take a notepad for sure. Yeah, so just yeah. some really basic things. but Or an electronic pad, yeah. Yeah, and so, um, like I mentioned, there can be formal and informal mentors, but can your boss be your mentor? What do you think about that? Oh, for sure. Yeah? Yeah, I've had a um, boss who really taught me a lot about uh, what it means to be balanced in my work and to have a strong work ethic without uh, sacrificing um, you know, certain personal passions and things like that. And then he just taught me how to be really good at my job. He really, cause when I started working there, I was very young mm -hmm. and I kind of feel like he raised a portion of me. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I could definitely see a boss being a mentor. Okay. And yeah, because they're in a lot of cases, they're there to develop and coach you along, um, help you understand the business, maybe business politics, mm -hmm. even from a, a leadership um, perspective. One time, <laughs> Well, I won't even go into that. It was funny in my go head. Go into it now. <laughs> one time, um, one of the high schoolers that I was um, mentoring, um, I was giving them some constructive feedback. And um, uh -huh. they like went and told their mom on me. It was two sisters. And like the mom came up and she was like wanting to uh, like charge me up. <laughs> <laughs> For giving her well, the, daughter's the constructive feedback. Seriously. Right. It was insane. Yeah. yeah well, th that's stifles your growth when you can't take criticism. Yeah. So as a mentee, you need to be able to accept the um, the constructive feedback that you're given because it only helps you um, to grow. I've had the opportunity. And in our book, we, we talk about, too, how as a mentor, you have to accept some feedback from your mentee. Yes. So if the mentee comes with actually like, you know what, I'm not getting this out of this and this is what I want. Yeah. And either you are maybe this isn't your expertise, which is just a way to say, maybe you ain't capable. <laughs> um, so if not, can you please point me to someone who okay. is mm -hmm. involved in yeah. this? Yeah. I've spoken with friends and I've asked them what their mentor experiences have been like. And they um, had pretty similar things to say. They said their mentors were resourceful. They believed in mm -hmm. them. They encouraged them to achieve. They also said their mentors motivated them to action. And in some cases taught them how to uh, network. So, um, 
we can find all those things. There's lots of ways to be a great mentor. But what I found was an article from Forbes um, dot com that says if you want to be a great mentor, do these five things. So I'm going to go through it, but I'm going to kind of weave in some of my own thoughts because I've had the um, fortunate experience to be able to manage a mentoring program at my firm for a few years. So mm, look at that. that was the most professional sentence. I had the fortunate experience <laughs> of being able to manage the a mentor program at my firm Listen, for the last two don't, years. Don't be like that. <laughs> <laughs> One day I'm going to grow up and it's going to be fabulous. And I'm just going to stun on you all day. Mm-hmm. You, you okay, already be ahead. doing that. Forget you. Why ain't you mentoring me? <laughs> anyway, I, I ain't going to hold it to this. Listen, you listen. that's the first step to listen first. <laughs> So the article <laughs> mentioned that a mentor navigates their um, mentee relationship by um, showing them a solution um, to, or something to them, helping them get to that next step. Um, but in order to help them get to that next step, you absolutely have to be there to listen to your mentee. Because if you can't, if you if you're not listening, you don't know what it is they want to accomplish or achieve or what roadblocks they need moved out of the way or um, what bridges they need created for them. So you have to listen. don't assume their uh, obstacles are the same ones you have or have had. Right. They have they are coming to you with a different set of issues. Right. Yeah. You're I can not learn from that. making a mini you. You are helping <laughs> them be the best they can yeah. be. Yeah. Version of themselves. Yeah. yeah that's mm-hmm. a good point. Um. Okay. Yeah. And then the second one is deliver honest feedback. So a mentor's job is to provide knowledge, inspiration, and feedback. Um, And of course, in a helpful way. And so, as we mentioned before, you have to be comfortable with um, receiving this uh, constructive feedback and not be afraid to have your work uh, critiqued. Um, And it's important. So a lot of mentors, um, they are not they have a tendency not to be honest. You know, you're not being complete, but you want someone that's honest and expressing their feelings to you. But that comes with a level of comfort. And so if you're not comfortable with your mentor, it might be necessary to switch out. Otherwise, how mm-hmm. can you get the um, full benefit of that? You know what I mean? And, and so like I wasn't comfortable with um, my mentor instead of just dropping it all together. I actually as a mentee should have either had a open communication with that person or sought another mentor so um, mm-hmm. that I could, you know, help myself motivate and inspire. Part of your role in inspiring your mentor, a uh, mentee is to help them reach their fullest potential. Again, you're not creating um, many me's. You want to help them to get on the, um, the other side, um, get past their comfort zone, um, help them achieve being uncomfortable, get on the other side of fear. Um, so, in order to inspire and motivate them, when well, you still have to have a really good relationship with them, you can send them articles that are relevant to the minute um, to your mentee. Share your experiences with them. Again, you're not making a mini, mini me, but through your ex- shared experiences, um, they can see uh, ways that they themselves can be inspired. Mm-hmm. Establish mutual respect. Uh, is this number three? This is actually number four. We are hopping along okay. here. So what was one, two and three? Um, Number one was listen first. Listen. Number two is um, deliver honest feedback. Number three Mm -hmm. is motivate and inspire. And number four is establish mutual respect. Um, The partnership needs to foster acceptance and safety. So again, I repeat, you need to be able to openly communicate with your um, mentor um, and be able to share things without feeling judged. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or feeling like it's going to be in the street. If I tell you something, will everyone know? Yeah. 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 That's that's hard to take. You're sharing something that is important to you. That's private for you, personal for you. And then you hear about it from somebody else. Mm -hmm. That don't look good. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Don't look good at all. So there's important for you to have um, um, that mutual respect. And one of the biggest ways to show that respect is for someone um, is for you to value their time. And so when you're meeting with them, you're not distracted by um, phone calls. You know, you're not walking away or answering somebody else when you should be dedicating. So if it's a 30 minute meeting, dedicate that 30 minute meeting to them. Don't be distracted by mm -hmm, outside noise so that um, they feel valued and it's worth your uh, true time. So mutual outside distractions. And then the final one is be present and open. They say showing up is half the battle. um, But when you do show up, it's um, crucial that you're present. Again, this is um, a little repetitive, but that's so important to be proactive and um, take initiative and be prepared to share your experiences, again, both positive and negative. 
have mentors again, I repeat, should be open and honest. So mm -hmm. um, those are just five things. But there's, again, a lot of things that make mentors really great. And um, the, I think the mentoring role is really great when you can help someone to achieve their own goals. It can be life changing. Mm -hmm. It can. It can really make a difference on both ends. Yeah. That was mentoring. Did you have any thoughts that you wanted to share about that before we move on? No, but I'm going to um, take advantage of the little knowledge I do have and um, the experience I have and share that with someone else. I know I did benefit from that uh, growing up and in my um, adult life. So, yeah, why not pass that on? Give what I've been given. Yeah, it makes a difference. I love that. Yeah. OK, yeah. Well, let's take a quick break before we get into okay. the details of the um, this week's book. OK, sounds good. Does quarantine stink? It doesn't have to. Introducing Light of Teas, the new luxury candle line by the Lit Society podcast. Each aromatic experience is inspired by literature. From The Great Gatsby to Sula by Toni Morrison, each candle instantly transports you into the setting that inspired its creation. Discover Light of Teas today by visiting L O V E L I T O T E S. That's lovelightatees.com. Again, lovelightatees, L O V E L I T O T E S.com. Or visit lovelightatees on Instagram and Facebook. Lightatees, they're not your average fragrances. And we're back. So, hey, yeah. Sorry. Would you give us some mm -hmm. context for the book and information about our author? Sure, sure, sure. Renee Watson is the author of this week's book, mm -hmm. Piecing Me Together. Yeah. Renee is, was born in 1978 in Patterson, New Jersey and grew up in Portland. Now our book takes place in Portland. So she knows what she's talking mm -hmm. about. She lives in New York currently. Since she was a child, she has had this passion for writing. And she's expressed that through uh, mediums like poetry, theater workshops. Um, she has facilitated her own theater workshop with young girls coping with sexual and physical abuse. Mm. Um, she's helped kids who've been displaced either due to Hurricane Katrina or um, the earthquake in Haiti express themselves and cope with this trauma through theater. Wow. So she's a big advocate for this like drama therapy, which I think she has a certificate in. Um, so she's oh, not just passionate cool. about it, but she's educated in it. I've heard about drama therapy before. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense because therapy in general for um, an actor or the one viewing the art is very therapeutic, depending on the piece of work. Yeah. I um, mean, a lot of people work through their their trauma, um, either subconsciously or consciously uh, through art or through creating mm. art. And so she's a big advocate for that. Um, now, I mentioned she moved to New York when she moved to New York. So growing up, she was uh, eating up all of this literature, <laughs> like really taking it in. Um, she was a big fan of Langston Hughes when she moved to New York and found out that this um, leader in the Harlem Renaissance his home wasn't open to the public as like a museum, as like a historical site. Mm -hmm. She wanted to do something about that. So she created the um, I2 Arts Collective and she had to lease the building, the brownstone on her own. But by doing that, she was able to create a safe space for people within the community to create um, and kind of like stopped this landmark from being lost, from its meaning being lost to gentrification. Oh, okay. um, so she's a now it only exists digitally now that space no longer exists, but oh, you okay. can visit visit it, their website. And there they say, um, founded by writer Renee Watson, our mission was to build upon Hughes' legacy by nurturing voices from underrepresented communities in creative arts. Though we're no longer in that physical space, we invite you to join us in reflecting on the community of artists, educators, and neighbors we had the opportunity to convene and collaborate with. So you can still go back and um, see the work, be inspired by the work that was done there. Um, so yeah, she's written a few books now. Um, I think she started writing in like 2008, 2009 and in 2010, she had a picture book published called a place where hurricanes happen. Oh, wow. Um, that was published by random house. Yeah. And random house is, uh, stuck with her for another pic picture book, Harlem's little blackbird, okay. the story of Florence Mills. Um, that was published in 2012, uh, YA novels, the side, this side of home piecing me together, um, and published in 2017, which we're reading today. And Watch Us Rise, co-written with Ellen Hagen, uh, was published by Bloomsbury. Those are all published by Bloomsbury. Yep. So that's our author, um, the very proactive, very passionate Renee Watson. Now, thank you for that context. We appreciate it. Uh, no problem. Let's now have a brief synopsis with no spoilers. No spoilers, brief synopsis. No problem. One sentence. 
Piecing Me Together is a story about hard work, good intentions, and the reality between them both. Ooh. Piecing Me... Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Sentences. And I'm like, ooh, ah. <laughs> no, okay, it's, okay. <laughs> it's the story of one teenage girl's struggle to find herself and her voice while figuring out who in her life to trust. Wow. Okay. Alexis, mm-hmm. what are your first thoughts of Piecing Me Together? Okay, so... um. I can't say I had any real first thoughts about it, but I saw the cover of The Little Black Girl. And of course, I was immediately um, interested <laughs> in reading it or knowing a little bit more about it. So, um, yeah, that's what I got yeah, for you. Yeah, it was you. recommended to us by a mutual friend. OK, cool. I love recommendations. Um, mm-hmm. So, Kari, what were your first thoughts? Um, based on the recommendation, I was just interested. I mean, this friend is a very avid reader, so I knew that if she recommended it, it had some substance and we haven't read a YA book. Have we ever read a YA book? No, we haven't. We read a baby's book. We read (laughs) Charlotte's Web. (laughs) But yeah, we haven't read a YA book. So I was interested to see what A is all about. Okay. I thought one of our, um, I I don't know. Yeah, right. It's weird. YA is a huge genre. I don't know why we don't read. I think we think we're above it. I don't. You know, I like the youngins. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and read them what they read. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I probably had some um, prejudice when it comes to books for teens and young adults, but uh, yeah, those you, were unfounded. To be honest, I really felt like um, piecing me, not piecing me together. Uh, Little Fires Everywhere was a young adult book. Yeah, I felt very why You're absolutely mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Maybe all. that's why I thought, oh, I don't like this. Mm-hmm. Throughout the whole book, yeah. I'm like, this is for teenagers. And not just because it folk, not to make this about that book but not just because it focused on the teen one of the teenage main characters but just the language in it the flow Mm -hmm. it did feel very yeah it feels very why yep you're right okay so thanks um for sharing your thoughts Mm -hmm. and um are you ready for the deep dive as ready as i'm going to be all right well let's get into it okay a deep dive into piecing me together by renee watson part one a way out, a way in. So uh, we meet in the beginning, Jade Butler. And Jade, every chapter in this book um, starts with one Spanish word and its meaning. And Jade's thing is that she's very passionate about learning Spanish, about learning this foreign language. And she sees it, she sees in it opportunity because um, as you become fluent in another language, you start uh, getting more job offers, she's hoping. And um, she sees it as a way to travel the world and, you know, see another side to this planet through different cultures. Uh, We start with the word exit or no, we start with the word succeed in Spanish, which has exit, the English word exit in it. And it's to her a hint that in order to succeed, Jade must leave or exit the life she currently has, everyone she knows and where she grew up. It's a way out, a way in. Her mom is a caregiver um, for an adult, an elderly woman. Um, Her mom used to work at the hospital, but got fired for stealing snacks. However, her mom is a trustworthy person. You are to like this mom, okay? Um, Jade's BFF is Leela, right? Lily. 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 Yeah. Jade and Lily grew up together. Um, but Jade doesn't go to the same school as Lily. Jade goes to this fancy school. Um, and in this school, like for Jade to go there, she's going there on scholarship. She tested in. So she kind of feels out of place. Her friends aren't there. And then the kids in the school all have moms who hire housekeepers, whereas Jay's mom kind of works as a housekeeper. Right. So they, she just doesn't feel like they'd ever understand her, those kids. Right. Her mom is always um, like trying to push her to make friends at school, but it's not happening uh, naturally. With them lives EJ. EJ is her uncle, but he's 20. So she looks at him like an older brother. Um, he dropped out of college and is making a name for himself as a DJ. Mm-hmm. Era, era. Um, <laughs> era, era. <laughs> yeah um, <laughs> we learned too that her mom had Jade at 16 um, and so she really wants Jade to have more opportunities than she felt like she had in life Jade's dad um, is in her life loves her very much calls her his little queen he has a white living girlfriend who Jade likes but she'll never say that in front of her mom because her dad got with this woman while you know have building a family with Jade's mom. Right. So mm-hmm. there's a little bit of static there. Also, you know, everyone kind of feels like he's using this white woman because he doesn't like have, have a, a real job. job right? <laughs> <laughs> and they've been together for like years, right? Like three years. And never married. Anyway, but they're fiance. But listen, they're fiance. Th- yeah, they're, they're like perma fiance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But Jade likes her. So anyway, those are the people in Jade's life. These are the people who have raised her. Um, Jade is excited at school to meet with Mrs. Parker. She's the counselor. Um, and she wants to meet with Mrs. Parker about this travel abroad, study abroad program. This excites Jade because for once, it's not about taking something. It's about giving something back. So Jade 
tested into the school and all the programs she's involved in, whether it be um, the SAT prep course or whatever, it feels like it's all geared to give to her because her story must be so sad. And we want to help the poor little right. black girl. And she wants to give something she has to someone else. And she wants to expand her horizon. So right. she feels like the study abroad program, which Ms. Parker is in charge of, would really help to put her on the road, on that path to the life she wants. The counselor, Mrs. Parker, has a youngest daughter married to a black man, and she has photos of them all over the office. Uh, one of her photos on her desk is of her uh, three, her and her three grandchildren wearing a Native, Native American stereotype at a hockey game. <laughs> we know all about that. Right. Go Blackhawks. Mm -hmm. um, she's nominated Jade for the travel a broad program or she wants to nominate her. She's made that clear that Jade is a shoe in for this program. Right. She thinks she'd be perfect for the program, but the program requires a nomination. Yeah, right. From a teacher. Right. So she's like, you'll, you'll probably get it. Um, but in the meantime, I want to talk to you about woman to woman. Woman to woman is a mentorship program for, uh, you know, it pairs black women with poor black girls. <laughs> that's the way it's, it is. But that's what it is. And Jade is like totally offended. Yeah. <laughs> like I came here to talk about the world and you're putting me in this little square again. Yeah. Um, it's another opportunity she doesn't want, but will seem ungrateful for turning down. And I felt that like you have to accept your place in all of these programs you don't want to be a part of. Otherwise, you might close the door to future programs you want to be a part of. Right. And people are spending time on you. You don't want to seem ungrateful. Mm -hmm. Bonus, the program comes with a possible college scholarship. Right. So there's, you know, that then Jay's like, okay, oh, wait, fine. I, wait, wait, what? I know. <laughs> okay, maybe college? I will do this program. Okay, fine. <laughs> woman to woman, here we go. <laughs> also, these are girls. Stop calling our babies women. Mm -hmm. Anyway, but that's the program. Um, now, before she left for school that day, she asked her mom to get some ice cream for her. Uh, I'm just going to mention this part because she she makes mention that her mom is always making promises, but her promises are flaky, not because her mom can't be trusted, but because their re resources are stretched right. and limited. So even asking for ice cream, it's like she she doesn't expect to get it when she gets home that day. She, her ice cream is there yeah. and it's it's extra special to her, something that someone else would have taken for granted. She sees as something hard her mom worked for just for her. Right. So the next day, Lily, the girl she grew up with, comes over and they're sharing a bowl of ice cream. And um, Lily is talking about her new history teacher. Um, she that history teacher teaches more than what's in the textbook. She tells the kids about York, for example. York was the black man who traveled with Lewis and Clark. Um, him and Sacagawea uh, paved the way for Lewis and Clark's expedition, um, facilitated it. But they had no form of um, they had this form of freedom, but no real power. They had no real power in this country so they're reflecting on that and jade's kind of thinking like this is something i would never learn at the bushy school i go to um but leela's teachers are all like very woke mm -hmm. right right <laughs> okay so jay reflects on the signs through portland referencing the travel by lewis and clark they don't say lewis and clark and sacagawea and york they don't say york and sacagawea they say lewis and clark right no reference is made to York. So it all reminds her of the counselor who, who proudly, Mrs. Parker, who proudly displays photos of her mixed grandchildren and her son-in-law as if to say she comes in peace. Can that be trusted? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, so do you know, Jade's very deep. She thinks about um, not just the way things are on the surface, but what do they actually mean? Yeah. Whether it be people's behavior or what we read in textbooks. Um, part two, woman to woman. So at the first woman to woman meeting, um, Jade's mentor hasn't shown up and Jade's like kind of salty about it. <laughs> like, mm, so mm. she like sneaks out and is like, forget this. I knew this was a waste um, of my time. Yep. <laughs> I never wanted to do this and I accepted it. And now I'm actually going to have to like get on the bus. It's getting dark. I'm getting harassed by weirdos on the street. Right. There are real consequences for you flaking out on me. Right. And, just this whole program I never wanted to be a part of. Uh, we also learned um, this evening that EJ, the uncle that lives with them, he had a friend who was shot right in front of him and killed. So the implication is that EJ's OK, but EJ's not OK. And yeah, he dropped out of college. He's got a lot of stuff on his mind. And so perhaps this uh, DJ in which he is giving his all like he's really trying to <laughs> make it a thing. It helps him to irrit, release irrit. <laughs> some of the anxiety <laughs> he's no doubt carrying. Um, so. The mentor, the flaky mentor, her name's Maxine. And to her credit, she comes to Jade's home to apologize. Yeah. I mm -hmm. thought that was nice. I did too. Because Jade like lives in the hood. So the mentor is like rich or whatever. She was valedictorian at one time at the same school that um, Jade currently attends. So 
you know, she's like going out of her way to go to the ghetto. That's how you feel. And she just wants to apologize to Jade. I'm not trying to mimic anyone's voice, but that's just uh, how I saw Maxine. Okay. <laughs> And so she comes over and she's like, oh, my goodness, I'm so sorry, Jade. <laughs> Something came up. And so Jade shares with some art with her because Jade's an artist. So she like lets her in, shares her art, which that's a big deal when artists like share, share their, their work. work. With you. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Isn't it? Po- any yeah. kind of art. Poetry. Exactly. Yeah, that's a big deal. Whatever they create. Mm-hmm. And Maxine's like, oh, my goodness, this is great. Um, And they're like casually talking about travel. And Maxine mentions that travel changes you because it helps you see the world, but it also makes you appreciate home. Um ironically ej knows maxine and so once jade finds this out she's like oh who is my mentor because if she know my uncle she can't be all that (laughs) she can't be great at all she can't have nothing to share with me to make me better oh my goodness is my mentor a loser (laughs) and she's only been paired up with me because i'm poor and black and she's rich and black because that ain't enough turns out uh, maxine used to date john who's ej's friend um moving on Jade helps a Spanish speaking woman with directions on the street. Now for anyone learning a language, you know how big that is. Like when someone (laughs) approaches you in their language and you can communicate and help them with something, no matter how small in their own native language, it is a great feeling. And so Jade is like feeling on top of the world as she uh, gets on the bus. She's going to Sam's house. Now Sam is a girl that she noticed getting on her same bus going to her school. Sam is white. Sam lives with her grandparents and they actually share a Spanish class. Um, But they chat up one day. They start uh, talking to each other one day on the bus when this guy like gets in front of Sam and starts dancing. You know how it is. (laughs) Yes. If you've been on any form of public (laughs) transportation, you know how it is. So, so, you know, somebody might just jump in front of you and do the funky (laughs) Watusi. And what you going to do? Just sit there. So Jay like moved her backpack out of the way and motioned for Sam to come sit by her. So Sam sits by her and she's like, hi, I love when little girls meet, by the way, little boys. Too. Uh, these are like teenagers. Yeah. They're almost adults. I still love it. So um, she's like, Hi, I'm Jay. And Sam's like, Hi, I'm Sam. And Jay's like, Yeah, we have um Spanish class together. And Sam's like, Really? Oh my goodness, I didn't even notice. Um, you want to like hang out sometimes after school? And Jay's like, Sure, let's be friends. <laughs> so cute. So um, uh, Jade's going to Sam's house this one particular day. And as I mentioned, Sam lives with her grandparents. Now, Ugh. you have white friends like a lot of us do. You know that when you enter their living around, arrangement it's always like what am i gonna what walk into are you going to experience you never <laughs> what if, know from the neighborhood to the family to the extended family mm-hmm. who is the racist yes. i just want to know right away <laughs> just so, please you know. thank you so so sam goes to visit i mean jay goes to visit sam and sam's grandmother has dementia she doesn't respond when the two girls says hello but when Graham grandma hears about where jay lives jay lives in like north portland um she yells out Nothing but hillbillies, blacks, and Mexicans over there. <laughs> Shootouts all the time. Let them kill each other. <laughs> uh, Grandpa, who's very lucid and with it and together, um, talks about how long they've lived in their house and how the neighborhood's changing. There's no tinge of bitterness. He's just talking. He's just talking right. about the neighborhood. But in his words, Jade is reflecting on the family she knows that have had to leave this neighborhood. So he's talking about how it's changing and how they don't know. Um, you know, what the future of the neighborhood is going to be like. And she's like, I know people who had to move out of this neighborhood uh, when white people wanted to move in. She's just thinking that right. um, through taxation. Usually mm-hmm. we know about that. Mm-hmm. Did you yeah, mention so, that mm-hmm. the grandmother has a little Alzheimer? Has Alzheimer. Yeah, I said dementia. Oh, you did say that. Sorry. Mm-hmm. And we don't. She's not a big part of the story. No. Um, we actually never talk about her again. So um, we learned Sam's mom said one day that she didn't want to be a mom anymore and left her with her grandparents. So Sam's not like. You know, her life isn't problem free. She lives with her grandparents out of necessity and they take really good care of her. Her mom calls about once a month to ask superficial questions. And it's, you know, not an ideal situation. But Sam feels bad for enjoying more opportunities than her older brother had who was with her mom. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think he's in the army now. But when she talks to him about her life and about like her school and things she's looking forward to, he sounds happy for her. But a little, you know, it's that like remorseful feeling like, man, that's what a kid's life should be like. His life wasn't like that. Um, And she feels bad. But then she makes a statement that, you know what, Jade? Because Jade's like, you know, I know how that is. I know know exactly how that is. I feel bad that I go to this bougie school where none of my friends go and that we have sports that they've never even heard of. And that I'm um, 
considered for all these programs that open up opportunities that they don't have. And Jay, um, Sam makes the statement that, well, we shouldn't feel bad though, because we work hard. And Jay thinks of all the people who work hard, right. just like them, but never get what they deserve or need. Moving on. Back to the mentor, Maxine. Maxine promises to take Jade to brunch, but Jade's mom is like, um, you ain't grown and Maxine ain't asked me to take you to brunch, so Hello? you can't go to brunch. This is not how life works. <laughs> and I works. was feeling her. <laughs> yeah, you got to talk to the mom before you be taking kids to brunch. You can't... And also, what's brunch without alcohol? So why are you going to brunch with kids? That's stupid. <laughs> She's like, you ain't grown. <laughs> exactly. That's and how the mom I meet is. you? I don't even know right. you. You ain't taking my daughter nowhere. Mom. Exactly. But you can mm-hmm. come in and have a sit down, okay? Right, right. So Miss Butler, the mom, meets Maxine at the door and chastises her for inviting Jade without asking her mom first. Maxine apologizes. She knows her mom isn't home often, so she didn't know what to... (laughs) So uh, Jade's mom isn't home often because she's got to work a lot to support Jade and open up these opportunities for her. So she resents that statement. Um, The mom does. Maxine comes in for a bit and asks Jade's mom for permission to take Jade to a bookstore. The mom approves and makes it clear that she doesn't want to give Maxine a hard time. She just cares about her child because, you know, that's the only child she's got. And when this men- do right by her, and when this mentoring program is over, I'm going to be the mom still. So I love that statement. Like, it's great that you're mentoring her. But when that program is over, you'll you could be gone. I'm still going to be Jade's mom. Yeah. Yeah. So Jay wakes up one day. It's her birthday. And her plans are like all set. She's super excited. Sam and Lily are finally going to meet each other and they're all going to hang out. So remember, Lily's the girl she grew up with and loves tons. And Sam is the girl she met on the bus that goes to her school. Oh, this makes me so happy friends, to even talk about. Friends. This is so cute. And she's like, they're going to meet and they're going to be friends. And, and then we're all going to be friends. And it's just going to be friends. Yeah, it's going to be great. And, then, uh, <laughs> and her dad has also promised to drop off a gift that evening. Um, EJ and her fight a little bit about breakfast, about how her dad is like, sponging off the white woman he lived with but that doesn't that doesn't darken dampen her joy at all okay now when night comes none of her plans occurred nothing has happened Nunners. um sam could make it lily could make right. it for good reason like one was sick yep something else with the other the dad never came no call no show um, to be exact she spent the day on the couch girl it um, if you had let me know, I wouldn't have put on my clothes. <laughs> That's a, a word to Aaliyah. She's sitting on the couch like, man, this like is really garbage. So she goes to bed fighting tears, no doubt. And EJ, her uncle's like, come to the kitchen right quick. And he's got like a piece of cake with a candle in it for her. And, you know, it's just a little something. He did let her know, you know, I love you, girl. Even though, you know, your day sucked. And we got into that Moving little on. fight. <laughs> it's going to be all right. Yeah, even though we got it. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. He's like, are we good? And she's like, yeah, we good. Because she know her daddy ain't worth it. Ooh. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> when she gets to school the next day, Jade sees that Sam has covered Jade's locker with balloons. Everyone now recognizes that it's supposed to be Jade's special day. Everyone in the hall is recognizing her and not because she's the black girl or because her hair is really bigger today than it was yesterday. They're just saying something nice to her and moving along. And she likes it. Mm-hmm. They're like, hey, it's Jade. You know, and she's like, yeah, this is me. Hey, bye. <laughs> it's great. So that was really, really thoughtful of Sam, the new friend. Mm-hmm. Um, her dad also later comes to the house. He apologizes or she goes to his house. Yeah, she goes to his house. Right. We never meet his girlfriend, no, by the way. But um, she's unimportant. <laughs> okay. So she goes to the dad's house and he gives his baby girl, his queen, a camera and mini printer. The girlfriend probably bought it, but we ain't going <laughs> to worry about that. And he apologizes for standing her up. Um, he, they get to talking and she shares with him that she wanted to be, she says, I want to be a black girl that can read and write in many languages because at one time that seemed impossible. And you taught me that, dad. He's like, I did. <laughs> Cause you know, I'm borderline shiftless. But hey, at least you got you got something good out of this. That's great. So in this interchange, we see her motivations for really committing herself to the Spanish language. She sees it as a key to open up future doors. Mm-hmm. And she's right in that respect. Right. Um, yeah. So Maxine makes good in her promise and takes Jade to a black bookstore. To a bookstore. This happens to be a black bookstore. Um, there is artists work there like uh different coffee table books full of art remember jade's an artist so she opens these book books and she is just mesmerized and maxine's like hey you want me to buy that for you and jade's like yes i do <laughs> so she picks up like a book from a black artist and she just clutches it to her chest yeah. and she just loves it and on the ride home they hardly talk because jade is just engulfed in this book she's captivated by it she says that women to women woman to woman sorry is like having 12 new aunts 
They meet the founder, whose name I think is Sabrina. Right. And um, they meet at the founder's home. So they've met the founder before. And now they're going to the girl's house. And this is like so cool <laughs> because so Jay mentions that the home is full of people. First of all, everyone in the program is there and it doesn't even feel crowded. So this is a bigger house than Jade is like used to or whatever. Um, but then the girl talk starts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the, the plan is to do this like once per quarter quarter. The topic is dating. So some girls there are like me and I like, what, boys, let's talk. What can you tell me? What can I know? But Jay's like, this is low key kind of stupid and not the purpose, not why I entered this mentorship like, program. She's like, is to this talk about boys? the only thing that we can talk about? Surely there is more to talk about than just boys. I mean, we ain't all also, looking for a boyfriend. Ugh, so true and you don't give up your time after school to talk about dating with adult women right I don't know also if your um, mentor Maxine is dating your <laughs> uncle's friends she, what advice can she give you? they like they losers <laughs> they friends right? losers she you can, can tell me what not to do so, so the mentors seem to have all the answers and Maxine meanwhile is avoiding eye contact with Sabrina the leader and Jade can guess why because of John because of her boyfriend um, with these mentors and thinking about her parents, too, Jade feels worthy of good things. She's in this young woman's house, this um, house that this or apartment, whatever that this woman has. And, and she just the mentors seem to like have it all together, except for Maxine. And so <laughs> she was stuck with a like, loser mentor. <gasps> <gasps> she is stuck with. The, so Maxine is the loser of the mentors. And that's Jade's mentor. But Jade knows that when she walks out the door, the shattering will happen again. And she asks herself, is it a black girl's? Is a black girl's life a cycle of being stitched together and coming undone? When do you feel done? Mm. Josiah. So she goes back to school and Josiah is this like black boy who has to like put on the black costume when he's with his white friends at school. It seems he like gets extra black. But when he talks to the black kids, he's like just himself. Anyway, I thought this boy really liked um, Jay. But I did then too. Nothing ever happened. I know, yeah. right? Um, so his name is Josiah, which I love that name. And I thought he was like going to ask her to like walk her to the bus or something. <laughs> anyway, none of that ever happens. <laughs> Not at all. So, but he does ask for Jay to join him and his like friends, including Kennedy, who's like this really posh black girl for lunch. And Ken- Kennedy sees Jade and is like, you know, Jade, I saw you walk in toward the school. I can give you a ride. And Jade's like, oh, I live in North Portland. And um, Kennedy goes, ooh, <laughs> that makes so much sense. It's all coming to me now. OK, so Jade's like, I don't think I like these people. Sam and Jade join Josiah Kennedy and the rest of the friends for lunch. One of the girls is talking bad about a certain neighborhood. And she's like talking about how gross it is. It's filthy. And the people who live there. Well, that's Sam's neighborhood. <laughs> And Jay thinks to herself, you know, you should never talk about a place like it's unlivable when you know someone lives there. I've been guilty of that. Uh, this hit home. Love mm. it. Um, if they feel like that about Sam's neighborhood, man, what would these kids say about Jade's neighborhood? So Sam and Jade agree to never join that crew for lunch again. OK, <clears throat> field trip. <laughs> so uh, it's time for a field trip with Maxine and the rest of the mentors to the Portland Art Museum. Um, and there's um, an assumption here that these mentees don't get to see the other side of Portland. And I get this because the truth is a lot of people look at uh, kids in the inner city of Chicago and think, you know, have you been to the field museum? Have you been to the art Institute? Have you even been downtown? A lot of people haven't, but not because of where, right. not because they're from the inner city. I know people from the suburbs that don't go into the city at all. Right. <laughs> so it, it is true that people can get comfortable in their neighborhoods and never venture to downtown out of preference. Um, but for these girls, it's seen as a way of educating them and making them better to take them to the art museum. Fortunately, Jade is all about the art. So she's excited for this. But while they're there, Maxine gets a call from John, EJ's friend. Can you believe it? That no good, no good. Yeah, but Maxine, you left your mentee at the art museum to talk to John. And so moments like this, Jay feels like Maxine can't tell her anything. Um, Maxine apologizes, takes her to lunch to make up for it. And on the way there, Maxine says so many people from North Portland never travel outside of their bubble. It's really a shame. When the meal comes, I realize that an Arnold Palmer is some weird name for lemonade and iced tea mixed together. It's actually pretty good. So is the salmon and arugula. Maxine starts with a small talk, but I can't muster the fakeness. I'm still thinking about what she said on our way here. What do you mean when you said people in North Portland live in a bubble? I live in North Portland and I 
Oh no, not you specifically. I meant that I know a lot of people who only stay within the small confinement of their blocks. They don't really go out of their neighborhood to explore other areas. Maxine squeezes a lemon into her drink. I'm not trying to be disrespectful to Maxine, but I don't like her talking about my friends like she knows them, like she understands anything about them. Maybe they can't afford these places, I tell her. Yes, well, maybe the museum is a little pricey, Maxine says, but I think they have special discounts for families who can't afford full admission. All that kind of info is on their website. Well, not every family has a computer, and if they do, they might not have the internet, I tell her. Maxine is full of ideas. There are a lot of free things, too. I mean, even taking a drive to Mount Noma Falls or going to Bonville Dam. Yeah, well, my mom doesn't have a car, so there goes that idea, I say. And if she did, I'm sure she'd need to be conservative on where to drive in order to keep gas in the car. Maxine shakes her head at me. <laughs> Always the pessimist, she says, laughing. Always the realist, I think. Always the poorest. Oh. So we learned about Maxine. <laughs> Maxine... Maxine's mom is a surgeon and a lot of times growing up, Maxine's mom was gone because of work. The irony is not lost on Jay that although Maxine's mom was gone often growing up, no one ever thought that Maxine needed a mentor. Mm -hmm. This child is very introspective. So yeah, she is. So Jade asked Maxine, you know, what makes you want to do this? And Maxine is like, we're going to grow and learn from each other through this program. And Jade goes, well, how will that happen when you or no, she thinks, how will that happen when you keep flaking out on activities? And she thinks, you know, Maxine's got one more chance. One day, riding cars with Lily and Sam, everyone is um, sharing what they're good at. And Sam doesn't think she's good at anything. Lily's good at poetry. Um, Jade's good at her artwork. And Sam's like, you know, what? I don't think I'm good at anything. And Jade thinks and tells her, no, Sam, you're a good listener. Um, and she thinks about the times when she's confided things in Sam and the way that Sam looks at people when they're speaking. She's like, and you're a good friend, too. And then they keep talking, but Sam can't stop staring at Jade. And Jade looks at her and Sam goes, I think you're a good friend, too. Oh, it's so cute, you guys. Uh, girls night at Maxine's house. So um, the details of John and Maxine two year relationship unfold at a girls night that Maxine has with Jade and some of Maxine's friends. Let's hear it. This is not part of the woman to woman program. This is Maxine making an effort to get to know Jade in her best possible yeah, way. We need this um, there. <laughs> yeah. And so her friends are like, girl, he cheated on you and he been using you way before he cheated on you. And we don't know why you went up. And Maxine's like, me neither. <laughs> but, you know, he fine. <laughs> and they like, girl, get your life together. What is wrong with you? And so Maxine looks at Jade and she's like, I hope you have friends who are good enough to keep you from, you know, making stupid mix mistakes. And Jade tells her, <laughs> frankly, my friends wouldn't have let me date the guy in the first place and definitely not my mom. And it's kind of awkward because it's like she's looking down on a little part of Maxine's life. Maxine's like, nope, I get it. Thank you. Um, and then Maxine shares with her friends that she's not going to let Jade end up like those girls, implying the girls from her neighborhood. And Jade's like, you don't even know them. Also, you garbage. So <laughs> it's like, who are you to talk about my friends? Yeah. And Maxine is right, but she's wrong. There are opportunities that Jade will likely have because of the situation she's placed herself in but she's not better than anyone because of it. And then also don't judge people if you don't know how their lives are um, or what problems they face, what obstacles they're conquering. Right. And so she, this is just another mark against Maxine. So that's like a huge um, uh, cue for mentors. No judgment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then to openly say, I'm not going to let her end up like those girls. This one, this girl has a mom yes. <laughs> that cares about her a lot and a community of friends that are looking out for her. So you maybe need to worry about you a little bit. Worry about yourself. So, uh, Right. Worry about yourself. Um, so uh, moving on, Jay joins Sam on a little shopping trip. Um, now, while they're in the store, while they're in one store, Sam is helped uh, by a clerk. And while she's trying on clothes, the clerk starts harassing Jade and is like, you know what? You can't loiter here. <laughs> and also give me your bag. It's store policy. Weird. And Jay looks around and everyone else has their bag. Is there something I can help you with? I smile. Thanks for asking, but I don't think there's one thing in here that could even fit my pinky toe, let alone my whole body. I am joking, but I guess she doesn't think I'm funny. She doesn't laugh or even smile. She says, we don't allow loitering in our store. Loitering? I'm just, I'm waiting for my friend. You're more than welcome to wait out there, she says, pointing to the bench sitting outside the entrance. So I can't look around? Well, of course you can, but you can't stand idling. I walk away. There's no point in arguing with her. Plus, I see a cute bag on sale in the back of the store. 
On my way to the bags, I get distracted by all the earrings. I try on a few pairs, then pick up a thick bracelet, the color of a pomegranate, and sitting in the clearance basket. It's chunky and wide. It looks like it might fit me. I pick it up and try to slide my hand through. It will barely get past my knuckles. I try again, squeezing my fingers together as close as they can go, but the bracelet won't go on. I put it back into the basket. Excuse me. The sales clerk steps toward me. I'm sorry. I just noticed you still have your bag with you. Do you mind if I take it and hold it behind the counter? I, um, it's store policy. I look around the store. The woman standing at the rack next to me has her clutch in her right hand. She is white. The woman two racks from her has a purse hanging on her left shoulder, also white. Before I can object, she says, your bag is quite large, much larger than theirs, which is why. If you're not taking everyone's bag, you're not taking mine, I tell her. I'm sorry, but if you don't cooperate, I'll have to ask you to leave. Don't worry about asking me. I walk out the store right past all the other women who heard this lady ask me for my bag while they are still holding on to theirs. Um, so Jay walks out and leaves and just sits on the bench outside of the store. And one of the shoppers approaches her and recommends that Jade write a letter to that woman's manager because, oh, my goodness, I couldn't believe what I was seeing, even though I didn't stick up for you. A strongly worded so, letter, she suggested. Yeah, we've talked about letters, the power of letters. Right. Um, so Sam thinks the clerk was just trying to do her job. And this irritates uh, Jade for good reason. Mm -hmm. So she's telling Sam, you know, I just experienced this racist woman's um the situation because of a racist clerk and sam's downplaying it like well maybe she's not racist and maybe she was just trying to do her job so what's worse jay thinks being mistreated because of your look or having to prove it happened part four strings and things so the girls in woman to woman are given a tour of the oregonian symphony a hyper white woman is their guide i know you kids are all about hip-hop but she mentions to the uh, kids, you know, there are two black musicians that helped to put Oregon Symphony on the map. Uh, Maxine feels the need to tell the guy, you know what? We we aren't just about hip hop. And we do know those m m musicians you're mentioning, actually. And she gives some knowledge about him also. And so the woman's like, oh, great. You, you're all set. So Maxine now is annoyed for someone thinking less of her because of her race, even though this is what she does to Jade all the time. Um. And Jade is annoyed with Maxine because Maxine seems not only offended for being talked down to, but for being put in the same category as her mentees. So Jade thinks of how it feels when white people try to make you feel special or stupid. It's like cold, sunny days. Discomforting for the sun to shine without giving off heat. Um, Jade has also been avoiding Sam since the whole issue at the store. So as days pass, um, she's walking with Sam in the hallway because it just so happened that she couldn't like avoid her. Right. Um, and when they pass Miss Parker's office, Miss Parker invites Sam in, but asks Jade to wait outside. Sam comes out, just so excited because she's been nominated for the study abroad. Honey. Program. This is the program that Jade has been just mulling over in her mind and really wanting to be a part of since forever. And Sam got it. This year's trip is to Costa Rica. Mm, mm, mm. Jade feels a physical pain in her body and fights tears on the way home. Um. I kind of felt Jade here. I definitely felt Jade because I'm like, dang, Sam gets to go to Costa Rica and you get that lame mentor at woman to woman. That ain't fair. And not only that, <laughs> Jade mentors people or excuse me, tutors students in the classroom. She like the best student, yeah. right? She's asked yeah. by the teacher to tutor these people. So why wasn't she nominated? Right. And she starts thinking, how are choices made about who gets what and how much they get? Mm -hmm. Um, shopping with Ma Maxine for soul food. Moving on. Um, soul food Sundays at Maxine's house. <laughs> she <laughs> sounds so crazy, but we shop for soul food, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just it's a crazy okay. statement. Um, so Jade is going to visit Maxine's home where she grew up, not where she lives, but her family home where her parents are. And it's going to be the whole family because they do soul food Sunday, which is so funny to Jade that this girl <laughs> knows anything about soul food. <laughs> When they get to the house, it's like some out of magazine It's completely picturesque. It's huge. There's a sofa in the kitchen is so huge. And there's artwork all down the halls by Jacob Lawrence because uh, Mia, who is uh, Maxine's sister, owns an art gallery and is a big artist herself. Um, as they're at the table eating, there's a family check in where everyone go goes around and says what they're up to. The dad's like, I sold another house and such and such. And the mom's like, that's great. And then the brother announces that him and his wife are having a baby and everyone starts celebrating that to the point they forget about Maxine. And Jade sees it all in Maxine's face. Not only is Maxine the loser mentor <laughs> and woman to woman, she's the loser kid in her house. This girl graduated with a valedictorian. As a valedictorian, she's... Um, you know, she had some accomplishments in her right. life, but it ain't good enough for nobody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
So Mrs. Winter, Maxine's mom and Maxine have a quarrel in the kitchen. Maxine tries to give, um, Jay tries to give them her, their space, but she overhears Maxine saying, I know I don't have a job, but I'm doing this internship and I brought Jade here so that you can see I'm trying to give back to unfortunate people. <laughs> Yikes. And so the mom is like, I don't care about that little girl. Sorry story. I need you to get your life together. <laughs> get a job. So it's, clear, <laughs> it's clear that Maxine brought Jay only to show off for her mom to seem like she's doing something. Right. So uh, and also Miss Winter sends home with Jade enough food to feed a small army. And Jay's like, we got food. And she's like, oh, no, let me pack some of this up, too. <laughs> so, you know, they're all trying to pity her and like give her because she's like sad and poor. So Maxine on the way home is like, I don't know how much of that you heard. And Jay's like, you know what? I don't even want to talk about it. Moving on. Um, there's a conversation with her mom that Jade has where she mentions Jay does that she would rather stay poor than be like that rich winter family. Saying stay poor to her mother, she realizes her mistake. And her mom gives her a speech with a jar of pennies on the um, kitchen table. And she's like, is this all you want to have? All you want to be able to give your children? Don't give up Maxine. She might not be perfect, but she has connections that you can use to your advantage. And that girl graduated valedictorian for the 50th time. There is something you can learn from her. Um, so, you know, Jay's quick to give up on people who disappoint and, her. But I do feel like she's given Maxine plenty of chances. But I really like whatever. the idea of um, take what you need and leave the rest behind. Yeah, like Michelle Obama's mm -hmm. mom said, girl, you better make that money and worry about your fulfillment later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not quite like that, but. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so J Jade starts avoiding the woman to woman outings. Uh, Lily Le comes by and is like, my mom, uh, your mom told me I need to talk to you. <laughs> and Jade's like, what? I mean, I guess I'll tell you everything that's happening. And she tells her about Maxine and how disappointed she is. And Lily says what we're all thinking. Speak up, Jade. If you have a problem with this. Uh, study abroad program and not being nominated speak up about it if you have a problem with Maxine tell her so and Jay realizes she's busy trying to learn a new language when she's not using the words she already knows in use English use your words girl so Jay tells Maxine everything that's on her mind first of all you act like I'm broken but I don't feel broken until I'm around you second of all we go outside of my neighborhood all the time like there's nothing worth visiting within my neighborhood and also Maxine I mean like you be walking away from me for this like scrub like what's wrong with you <laughs> So Maxine also asked Jay, well, thank you. And what do you want out of the program? What can I do to make this serve you better? And she truly listens. They go out to dinner and they talk all about John like girlfriends. And Jade is like, it's that reverse mentorship you talked about. Jade's like, girl, you need to let him go. And I'm a kid. <laughs> and I know that. What's wrong with you? This is stupid. <laughs> Maxine true, takes it to true, heart. True, true, true. <laughs> Soon after, there is um, a case on the news of Natasha Ramsey, a teenager who was assaulted by a police cop at a party. And this is similar to something that has truly happened in the news where there was a party with teens. Um, someone called the police and the only one assaulted was a black girl. Her jaw was broke and she has some, she was put in the hospital by the officer. Um, Jade and EJ are discussing the situation over breakfast. An unarmed 15 year old black girl is assaulted and it hits home for um, Jade because that could have been her or one of her mm -hmm. friends. Now there's a situation um, at school the next day in the lunch line. A teacher named Miss Weber is in line for lunch with the kids. Hannah, um, a very rich white student, <laughs> uh, says something to Mrs. Weber that's disrespectful. Jade laughs. Mrs. Weber sends Jade to the counselor's office, not Hannah. <laughs> when they get to the office, Miss Weber is exaggerating the situation and even lying a bit. <clears throat> Excuse me, young lady. I'm not going to tell you again. Keep the line moving. Step up, step up. The voice interrupts my thoughts, and I realize Miss Weber is talking to me. She's a short woman with hair to her waist. We've exchanged hellos every now and then, but we've never had a conversation. You too, Hannah, she says to the white girl in back of me. Sam is in front of us and has already put her rice and black beans in the bowl. God, Miss Weber, don't you have a heart attack about it? Hannah says. I turn to Hannah and say, I know, right? Is it that serious? I pick up my bowl and get ready to dish my rice. Miss Weber stands in front of me. You have a problem, young lady? My name is Jade, I tell her. I didn't ask you what your name was. I asked you if you had a problem. I roll my eyes. You're so worried about the line moving and now you're holding us up, I say. I try to pass her, but she won't move. You need to adjust your attitude, Miss Weber says. I walk around Miss Weber. I put a scoop of rice and beans in my bowl. Hannah is behind me. She laughs. What is your problem today, Weber? PMS? I mean, God, what is it? I laugh and I put my grilled chicken in the bowl. Miss Weber says, okay, that's it, go see Miss Parker. I don't think she's talking to me, so I keep moving down the line. Sam has finished making her lunch and has gone to find us a seat. Did you hear me, young lady? Go see Miss Parker now. 
My name is Jade. And why do I have to go see Miss Parker? Because she's the only one in the school who can handle you. Come with me, she says. She snatches my lunch out of my hands, throws it into the trash can, and escorts me out of the cafeteria. When we get to Miss Parker's office, Miss Weber says, Shirley, I need to speak with you. Then she turns to me and says, you can stay here. Jade is not allowed to give her side of the story. And she's told, you know what? You're not in trouble, but you can go home if you want to, you know, decompress. Mm. And she's like, you know what? Fine, I will go home. Uh, this hit home, too, because I mm -hmm. can think of a few situations like that where you're basically a bystander, but you get the consequences. Yep. Um, so Sam sees this as not a racial issue when Jade is telling her about it, but economical because Hannah's rich and her parents have donated a bunch of money to the school. No teacher is going to touch her. Um, what Sam, in my opinion, is failing this to see is not only that Hannah uh, was able to uh, leave the situation unscathed from consequences, but that Jade was not. So it's one thing to give extra leeway to Hannah because she's rich. But why did the teacher feel the need? Yeah. To send Jade to there the There was no office. reason to send her to the counselor's office. No, no. Um, again, Jade is speaking with Lily, the friend she grew up with. And the teachers at Lily's school all met with the students to let them know, you know, we've heard about Natasha Ramsey in the news. Of course, if there's anything you need to talk about, our doors are open. Um, Lily's teacher has even asked the students to write a poem for the victims of police brutality to help um, exercise some of that angst that they may feel about this unfair situation. And Jay's like, man, I don't think any of my teachers even care about this. And look what your teachers are doing. So she sees that, you know, um, disparity, disparity between from going to this um, mixed culture school to the mostly white school um, and the cultural divide. Yeah, the cultural divide. Maxine wants Jade to talk it out with Sam and stop comparing Sam to Lily. Some friends are worth fighting for, Maxine says. Um, Jade confronts her. She's trying to find her voice. So she confronts her Spanish teacher in a very respectful way. I um, mean, he says he didn't think it was fair to nominate Jade for the uh, study abroad program because Jade has all these other programs given to her, whether it be women to woman or the um, SAT prep. And Jade is flabbergasted. She's like, I earn an A plus every semester. And you ask me to tutor the other students, but you didn't think it was fair. Shoo. And she walks out before she cries. Then her and Sam have it out. Um, as Sam is preparing to leave for Costa Rica, Jade is like, you get Costa Rica and I get SAT prep. <laughs> and Sam makes some good points too. Like I'm, you're always bragging to me about women to women and you may not see it as bragging, but you're always telling me about the opportunities you have. How come you can't be happy for me when I get an opportunity? And Jade's like, it's not that I'm not happy for you. It's not that I don't want you to go. I just want to go too. And, Jay, and Sam's like, well, I want you to go too, but you're not going. So just be happy for me. And anyway, they leave on not so good terms. Yeah, as a blow up. And yeah. And Jade is like, well, have fun on your trip. She doesn't say, you know, I'll see you when you get back. She's just like, bye. Mm -hmm. And Jay, um, Sam also mentioned, you know, I don't feel like everything's about race like you do. And that really was like the end for them. Um, now Jade is walking with Lily down the street and we're toward the end of the book. They see an officer pull over a black woman. And as many black people do, they also stop just so that they can be witnesses of whatever happens. Nothing happens. The officer gives the woman a ticket, but Lily can't stop shaking. She's paralyzed with fear and has to hold Jade's hand um, on the walk back home. And this is uh, showing us the residual effects of this type of right. violence. And how it affects more than the people involved. Sam is back from Costa Rica, but makes it clear that they're not friends anymore. She doesn't board the bus. Um, she's not waiting to walk with Jade down the hallway. And Jade is like, you know, I guess that friendship's over. Maxine and Jade later talk about coming undone and being stitched back together. Maxine was raised to be proud of her black culture, but to never be too black. So she, too, is dealing with some inner conflicts. Um, then when she went to school, Maxine, she would have to act blacker to hang out with the black kids so she was she felt like she was always caught in this limbo it's showing us that everyone has their um issues whether it be um not being black enough or being told you're not being black enough or being too black or not even seeing black life for what it is right um, Mia, Maxine's sister, is going to give a woman to woman workshop about being an entrepreneur and about having an art gallery and this has been on jade's calendar since it was announced she's super excited she knows the day hour till the event when the day comes for uh, mia's workshop it is everything jade hoped it would be uh, mia gives a great talk about entrepreneurship and when all the girls are let loose in the art gallery um jade just leaves feeling inspired and she also applies for an internship at the gallery you see connections yeah yep, yep. we get connections mm -hmm. yeah 
Um, so Sabrina, who's head of the woman to woman program, asked Jay to contribute her artwork for a future fundraiser. And this is toward the end of the book now. Um, at the fundraiser, which she's got a dress for and she's like the star of the show, um, Jade is learning how to find her voice and speaking directly with people, firm handshakes, explaining her um, inspiration for different works and why she feels art is so important. Uh, one man makes a comment, a white gentleman, that uh, Jade, you're so articulate, you know, and well spoken. And one of the, you know, not one of them, the mentor is like swooping yes. to correct his micro aggressive compliment. And Jade feels like this nurturing. Um, so that's really good for the baby. Um, Lily's homework again, another day is all about. So Lily goes to like the proest blackest school in the world. <laughs> so. And so Lily's homework is all about how social media and social justice today mirror what Emmett Till and his mom did in the past. So because Emmett Till's mom fought for an open casket and that galvanized people all over the world to care. Um, that's what people are doing now with social media uh, when it comes to social justice. And Lily has to write a poem about Natasha Ramsey, but she wants to do more than that. So Jade is inspired to pitch to Lily and to woman to woman an idea for a fundraiser and open mic night where they Lily could share her poetry. Um, Jade could share her art. They could raise money. And um, that money could be donated to Natasha's family for health care um, for her health care. And so um, she ref reflects at the end of the book on York and how remember York was the black man who traveled with Lewis and Clark um, at the end of their travels. He was eventually given his freedom, but he didn't get any land. He didn't get any opportunities. And she thinks about wealth and how wealth is giving what you've been given. So if you're not given anything, what do you give? Um, Mia was so excited about the idea for this open mic and fundraiser that she made some calls and now there are going to be some professional artwork in the show. So the show's coming up. This is not the fundraiser that uh, Mia had organized. This is a brand new one that the babies are doing, that the kids are organizing and it's going to be great. Um, at the previous fundraiser, Jay picked up some business cards from the people who were so interested in her. And a lot of them are coming too. even Mr. Flores, her Spanish teacher um, is planning to come and he's giving extra credit to any students who come. So it's becoming a big deal. Um, one day in Spanish class, Mr. Flores tells the class to work in pairs with flashcards and he puts Sam and Jay together. At first they start the assignment as planned, but then they start speaking in their own words. Lo siento, yo también. And Sam's grandfather, it comes out, has told her that she don't know everything and she needs <laughs> to listen more. And Jay's like, yeah, my mentor told me I need to stop giving up on people because pe some people are worth fighting for they say they're sorry to each other um and jade assures her all she needs to do is listen you don't have to downplay the issues that i have because you feel awkward about them just listen which is you know you're amazing at that and that's what i want for my mm. friend so because jade was able to express herself that friendship is salvaged rekindled and thriving she again. used her voice um and it seems like Mr. Flores like planned this all along because at the end of the class, he's like looking at them like, I know y'all didn't do, do no work, but y'all look like y'all need to talk. <laughs> so um, he asked Jay to stay after class and he tells her, I thought about what you said. And you know what? I've nominated you for next year. So she'll be going to the Travel Abroad program next year. Why? Because she found her voice and was able to articulate her frustrations. Um, so open mic night comes. This is the end. Everyone from woman to woman is there. Mr. Flores is there, as he said he would be. Some students are there and even the parents of Natasha are there. And, you know, it's amazing. The end. <laughs> okay. Black Girls Rising by Lily Simmons. Our black bodies, sacred. Our black bodies, holy. Our bodies, our own. Every smile, a protest. Each laugh, a miracle. Piece by piece, we stitch ourselves back together. This black girl tapestry, this black body that gets dragged out of school desk, slammed onto linoleum floor, tossed about at poolside, pulled over and pushed onto grass, arrested never to return home, shot on doorsteps, on sofas while sleeping and dreaming of our next day. Our bodies, a quilt that tells stories of the middle passage of roots yanked and replanted. Our bodies, 
a mosaic of languages forgotten, of freedom songs and moan prayers. Our bodies no longer disregarded, objectified, scrutinized. Our bodies, our own. Every smile, a protest. Each laugh, a miracle. Our bodies rising, our feet marching, legs dancing, our bellies birthing, hands rising, our hearts healing, voices speaking up. Our bodies so black, so beautiful, here, still, rising, rising. And we're back. Alexis, what did you think of Piecing Me Together? Would you recommend this book? I absolutely would recommend this book. It is a really great book. I really like Jade and how introspective she was. And she really, we could really hear and see what she was thinking. And that just kind of played out throughout the whole book. I, I really loved it. I, I really do. It, it was some pieces in there, the Spanish pieces that uh, made me think of my own um, daughter and then her. She's a dark skinned uh, child. And so I thought about <laughs> I thought about her a lot of times throughout this book. And she's and fluent in Spanish. Her ex- yeah. Her experiences um, would have been like. So, yeah, yeah I really um, appreciated this book. What about you? Would you did you enjoy it? Would you recommend it? Yeah, I think I'm seeing how uh, every book doesn't need to hold all the secrets of the world. This book is very simple. Um, it's simple in its language and its theme. But in a way, it's uh, not simple because it's tackling serious, big issues in a very digestible way. And that's what right. YA is. So I was happy to be reminded of, of that. And uh, yeah, I love the story. I thought it was a complete story. You root for Jade. There's no... Um, there's there's a lot of nuance there in the language and in the relationships that you can reflect on any point in your life because you always have these questions about um, who you trust, who should you look to, who doesn't understand you, who is being purposefully ignorant about you and everything you go through. Um, so I love the way Jade would really think about her relationships and how in the end she learned to use her voice in a powerful yeah. way. Mm-hmm. So I'd recommend it. Yep. Oh, oh, that's great. It was a great read. Kari, I really appreciate you sharing this book with us this week. <laughs> I did. Oh, I did. Th- oh thanks. That's okay. Yeah, um, what are we reading next week, Kari? Men We Reaped by Jasmine Ward. All right. Well, great. Thank you. I'm looking forward to that book. Uh, thank you, everyone, for <laughs> listening to Lit Society. We'll be here next week, Thursday. Lit Society is brought to you by Alexis Anaria and Kari Herrera. Support the cause by leaving a five-star review for our show on Apple Podcasts, along with a comment about why you absolutely love us. Because we, we love, love you, too. too. Yes. yes. <laughs> and if you enjoyed what you just heard, tell a friend about Lit Society Podcast. Visit LitSocietyPod.com for show notes, this month's book list, and to sign up for our amazing email newsletter. But... Wait, <laughs> have you tried Lotta Tees? If you haven't tried our luxury candle collection, please go to Love Lotta Tees and try our, some amazing. of our faves. Yeah, they're yeah, amazing. They're, they are amazing. And folks and readers, until next time, <laughs> read, read something. something.